If you okay, so so uh, let's to just talk briefly in the end about your project now about radicalization, mm. because this when 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 I know you I know you're working with radicalization mm. now and radicalization of young men. Why why did you why did you start doing that? As a woman, and as a woman who who does and believes in the things that I believe in, I also am very painfully aware of the fact that it's women like us who are. Um, who are going to, who are going to, and are have been historically bearing the brunt of these movements. Mm. So part of the reason I'm doing this is self-preservation, completely selfish. I need to understand why this is going on, so that we can deal with it in a better way. Why do you think it's going on? What has struck me is that uh, I started the project not very hopeful. Uh, but I'm leaving the project actually more hopeful, more optimistic. And the reason I f I'm saying that is there's actually a lot more we can do because a lot of the reasons they're going that way are all very, very human, emotional, psychological reasons. And one of the most fundamental aspects of it is a lack of belonging and a lack of sense of being invested in something else. This thing, this monstrous mm. movement is providing, it's ticking all the emotional boxes for these young men. Like? Like forgiveness, mm. like inclusion, like purpose, like heroism, like I matter. Mm. I'm a part of something, I actually matter. It accepts rather than rejects them. And then, of course, it perverts it into violence and they're nothing but cannon fodder, quite mm. honestly. They might think it's, and it gives you a life purpose. We're all looking for that. Mm. So the rest of us have to do a much better job at helping them see that there are other alternatives. Mm. When you are a completely lonely, a completely confused, isolated, rejected child, you see this stuff, and then also the media also, you know, we're also making this movement sexy, you know, and we are. We're, we're making it, if you can't be the hero, you will be the villain, mm. right? So they're doing that. They know they can't be the hero. So the fact that they think they can't be the hero, that has something to do with us as well, that we have not managed to provide a society mm. and a space for them where they feel like, I am a part of this. Mm. This is mine. When looking at this whole this whole story that we're talking about, it mm. starts with you uh, in the beginning of the 80s, you know, singing like sit sitting every afternoon and doing your homeworks and singing and so on, your mm. father being strict and so on. You, now we're sitting here, we're talking about young radicalized men. Uh, how much does Islam play of a role in this? This whole story about the Muslim minority in Europe reacting in a certain way. Most of this comes down to really basic, simple human stuff. Yeah. And we can try to make it something really big and different, uh, but then we're actually also going to make it much harder to resolve. Yeah. Because then we make it into this unimaginable, yeah. strange, scriptural mm. thing. But really, it comes down to something else. It comes down to people. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to say, oh, I'm very religious, I'm very this, and I'm doing it in the name of this, that, and the other. But underneath it, it's something else. Mm -hmm. In doing this film, that's what I have found. Everybody, before I started the film, mm -hmm. said, oh, find out yeah. if it's, it, is it ideology yeah. or is it politics? Yeah. And I have found... Religion or social structures and so on. Yeah. And what I have found mm -hmm. is that those are, of course, part of the pie. It's a part of the, the entire context. Mm -hmm. It is. But what I've found is that it's window dressing because they think it sounds cooler, mm -hmm. it sounds tougher, and it, they know it will scare you more. Mm -hmm. It will scare you and your audience much more if they make it about something apocalyptical rather than... I just feel like a silly boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
to me, freedom of expression is everything from words to dreams to aspirations to what's possible for you. And I think we have to get much better. I think we have to get much better. We have to stretch the space of expression as wide as we possibly can for it to include women, for it to include minorities, for it to include everybody. And not just religious people should not get to dictate what that space is. Not just media should get to dictate what that, speech, what that space is. We all belong in it. It's dear and precious to all of us. And so it must be protected for, for, for us all.